We're going to talk about dot products. When we're talking about dot products, we want to consider vectors. So consider a vector x, which is <clears throat> x1, x2, x up to xn. This could be any dimension. It could be two dimension, three dimension, or multiple dimensions. I'll give you some examples of that. And we'll also have another vector. They both need to be in the same dimension. So this is uh, these are nth dimensional vectors. One of the big powers that come from dot products is that it can be calculated in two different ways. The first way is that the dot product of x and y is the sum of the products of the components. We'll look at some examples in a minute. The second way to calculate the dot product is of x times the length of y times the cosine of the angle between them. So there are the two ways. The dot product is the sum of the products of the components and that's also equal to the length of the x vector times the length of the y vector times the cosine of the angle between them. People sometimes visualize vectors as arrows in whatever dimensional space they're in. So if vector x is this arrow starting and and when you do it, think of a dot product, you think of the, both of the arrows starting at the same place. So we've got this ray starting at this point. That's x, the x, and this is the y. Then the length of this ray is the length of x, and the length of this ray is the length of y, and the angle between them is just that angle uh, between the two vectors. So let's look at some examples of how we can, can find the dot product in both of these ways. Suppose that we've got a vector x which is 2, 3, so we're in two-dimensional space, and y is equal to a minus 3, 7. So here's a quick, quick sketch of those two vectors. x is the vector 2, 3 over 2 up 3, so there's that ray and y is the vector minus 3, 7, minus 3, 7. We'll be able to find the length of these two vectors very easily because there's a right triangle here, isn't there, in each case. And of course the angle between them is this angle right here. Now that's going to be a harder thing to find, but we'll use calculating the vectors in two ways to be able to find that angle. So in the case that x is equal to 2, 3 and y is equal to a negative 3, 7, then the dot product is going to be the sum of the products of the components. So it's going to be 2 times a negative 3 plus 3 times 7, or in other words, a negative 6 plus 21 is going to be equal to 27. But we also know that the dot product is equal to the length of x times the length of y times the cosine of the angle between those two. Remember that x is 2, 3, so there's a right triangle right here, and we'll be able to find the length of that. So the dot product will be the square root of 4 plus 9, because this vector went over 2 and up 3, so that the length of that vector is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared. The length of this vector it went negative 3 and up 7, so that's going to be the square root of negative 3 squared plus, uh, this should be a 49, I'm sorry. Okay, so the, the length of the y vector is, uh, is this is negative 3 squared plus uh, 7 squared square rooted uh, times the cosine of the angle between them. We're going to use these two facts to be able to find out something about the angle. Okay, so let's clean up this calculation just a little bit. Um, that becomes the square root of 13, that's the, the length of the x vector, times the square root of 58, that's the length of the y vector, uh, is equal to the cosine. Uh, times the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product. So that square root can that uh, square root can be uh, combined. So it's going to be the square root of 13 times 58. So let's simplify that just a little bit further. That becomes the square root of 754 times the cosine of the angle. 
We now know that the dot product is equal to 27, but it's also equal to the square root of 754 times the cosine of theta. Solving that equation, 27 is equal to the square root of 754 times the cosine of theta, we can uh, find the cosine of theta, we can find out that the cosine of theta is equal to 27 divided by that square root. Now, there's a lot of things that we can do with that. We could actually find the cosine inverse of both sides of this to be able to find uh, what theta was. Just looking at this particular number, the cosine of theta, if, the, if theta is, is between 0 and 90 degrees, then, then the cosine of that value will be positive. If theta is is bigger than 90 degrees, it's, if it's an obtuse angle, then, uh, then that value is going to be a negative amount. And so just looking at, at the positiveness and negative of that value, we can tell whether the angle is acute or obtuse. Now we've only looked at the case of a two-dimensional vector, but we could do this with a three or four or five-dimensional uh, vector as well.